tumor. So the patient was well, and a couple of weeks later, two weeks later, I debounded. If I have the other one month, I'd be able to solve this open bar. But unfortunately, I don't. So we end up with 37, and I lost 23 points on second model only. So there are some work needed to be done, but unfortunately, he is leaving Taiwan. So we depart and let the posterity segment settle by itself. But even that, we still achieve 37. That still match our association standard. So this is still a very good case to present in our association. <laughs> so there is no perfect result. But when you produce the mistake, you always study the mistake and show your audience why you make that mistake. Finally, how do you solve this soft tissue, the gingival margin? So we evaluate the pin and why. And we find out that we need to cut a little bit down. So you need to present how much you want to cut the gun. So you need to go back to the biological risk. You, you don't want to violate the biological risk. And the biological risk, you use the circus step, clinic probing, and you find out that you always want to preserve the biology risk. That's junctionary PCA and tissue graph. So your something is like this. So after that, you know that you still have one or two millimeters you can cut the central incisor. So you make a sounding. And after that, you know the sounding depth is four millimeters. And you have preserve, you need to preserve the biologic waste, two millimeter, circus than one millimeter. So you can have one millimeter change back to me. So you go ahead and use your bio laser, some tissue laser, and cut it. And finally, you get the result. And this is the day he was leaving Taiwan. We take a group picture. And he was so happy. He is so happy about this treatment because three previous doctors believe he needed, he needed surgery. And I was the only one who proposed this non-surgical approach. And you may ask, so what? He is a patient. He has no idea about the quality of treatment. And let me give you the example. Last month, I present this case to IU Charlie Burst from St. Paul's. And after the presentation, Charlie Burstone asked me to show the case again. In private. He wanted to learn in private. And three minutes later, turned out to be a lot of people, no speaker, just around our table, wanted to see this case again. And you probably recognize there is a very famous Dr. Park. This Dr. Park told me he is a very famous Dr. Park. <laughs> and I never, well, I never heard about you, this Dr. Park. I only know this Dr. Park. <laughs> <coughs> it turned out to be there are a lot of Dr. Park in Korea. <laughs> so you have to know it's uh, KB Park or CB Park or some, some park, and not a lot of park in Korea. So he asked a lot of questions about this case, and finally he came up with a conclusion. He hit the table and say, hit the table, and say, mm, Chris. I agree, this is the best way to treat this case, this patient. And I was so happy because Charlie Burstow is considered the godfather in orthodontics. At the age of 85 years old, he is still very smart, very clever. And he, he can ask very sharp questions. So, go back to our original. We want to have step number one, pre-treatment. So tomorrow, when you show the pre-treatment, the audio will evaluate the quality of your pre-treatment data. 
If the photo is blurred, people will say, why you are not a focus? It, it's not considered a case. Number two, they want to see, listen, how, how you diagnose this case and come up with smart treatment plan. And number three, you show the post-treatment data. And in the orthodontic, we evaluate with CRE and PIN and Y is any score. And step number four, you evaluate your result and summarize your treatment team. With that, the audio will satisfy, satisfy and learn a lot from you. Let's just show the audio how good you are. They have no interest in how good you are. And one more, Dr. Park. Yeah, you are a good artist. Thank you. <laughs> so, finally, you need a frame in a master work. Once you produce a good result, you always want to frame it and put on the wall. Oh, this is a piece of work. Something like that. You are work. And how to frame your master work? Let me give you a tip. The best way to frame your artwork is publish your case. That's why in our journal, I always encourage you to publish your case. Do not just present a case. Because you present a case, only maybe 100 people will listen. But when you publish, it becomes forever, like a diamond, diamond forever. So when you publish, you publish the pre-treatment and post-treatment. After that, you discuss how you treat the case, the treatment procedure. Also, you show how you how do you cut the gingivectomy, how you do the gingivectomy, how do you settle the posterior segment. All the tip is right in that article, and they can read over and over and learn from this article. And finally, you, you discuss your mechanic and you set to evaluate the change. At the end, you have the cephalometric change. And also, you attach the discrepancy worksheet so people can understand how difficult that case is. Finally, you have CIE to evaluate the quality of the result and the quality of pin and why is set is score. And you're done. So with that, you'll be able to get this diploma <coughs> from a very famous guy like Dr. K.B. Park, Dr. Eugene Roberts. Eugene Roberts is my mentor. So I have my orthodontic mentor and implant mentor as an examiner and sign up for this diploma. So you become the diplomat of IAOI. That is great achievement, especially you have Dr. Paul's signature. <laughs> so you publish it, you will present case. Dr. Kim, I would love to see you submit your case next week. No rush. You have <laughs> seven days to write up your outcome. Yes, that's what you do that. <laughs> oh, you can do it too. So it is required to publish your case in IJOI in order to become the diplomat of our society. So with that, I want to thank you for your visit. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the evening. Thank you.